Today on Yam Maker, we're going to be converting the Snapmaker A350 from the CNC mode to the laser mode. Are you as excited as I am? I sure hope so. My name's Casey, and this is Yam Maker. Welcome to Yam Maker. <laughs> so, first thing we need to do is take off the bed um, and get that out of the way. And the only reason why I'm going to go ahead and show all this is, well, that's what I do. Also, the only thing that I have cleaned so far, and I've done seven or eight different CNC operations. The first three that were seen on video, a couple other ones since then. Um, I'm just going to have to live with this machine being slower than the other one. The cutting out isn't too bad. The doing the relief cuts or the carving. That one's just, it's slower. Um, I did find out that I can put a quarter inch bit in here, but I have to get a different collet. And I actually think I have one somewhere. I just have to locate it. Um, that would speed things up. Also on the cutting, I tried bumping up the depth to a millimeter and a half. And there was some severe bogging in the spindle speed. So, I would, I'm going to stick with a millimeter myself, um, cutting things out, that didn't take too long, so, but as you can see here, um, let's see which one can we see this better on, zoom in, there's not too much dust, um, most of it was all on the build plate. I mean, your mileage will vary. Most of it is over on this right side over here. We close this door. Maybe be able to see it a little bit better without having the glare. Uh, that's just the sawdust that you're seeing. I thought it was a glare, but that's the sawdust. Um, it's not that bad. Uh, not like the original snap maker where it was getting all over into the rails, linear rails and whatnot. This one, they're nice and clean on the top from what I can see. I mean, well, not nice and clean. There's still dust on there, but it's not as bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward while I change this over. So sit back and enjoy for the next 10 seconds or so. All right, we're here in Lubon, so we're gonna go to the laser G code generator, and I'm just gonna do some text, and just do, yeah, maker, uh, zoom in, cause that's kind of small. Um, let's make our font size, let's go 72. And just move that up, and then I'm just gonna draw a couple yeah, I'll give them to my daughter. Get her heart. Delete that one. And two hearts. So we'll go to process. We don't want to fill because we want to cut the whole thing. Let's go ahead and optimize the path. Okay, so now we need to figure out how deep we need this to cut. So to do that, I'm just going to measure the thickness of my material. And I'm just using leftover boxes from either the snap maker or the enclosure. And those are 0 0.5 millimeters, 0 0.6 millimeters. So I actually should only need to do one pass. I'm going to have it do a second pass. So we'll go ahead and generate the G code. All right, so we got that set. Uh, my material thickness is actually 0.6, so I'm going to leave this as two passes. And I want to save this as... I don't want to save that. I just want to save the CNC file. So we're going to cancel. We're going to go export G code file. And I'll leave it there. And I'm just going to do laser test as the file name. Okay, save. We'll go back to this. 
refresh, connect. Okay, so we're connected and it pops up the home reminder on the laser. So it was pretty close. We got our 54, 53, I think everything's okay. I don't have anything there. So I'm gonna go back to the laser. We're gonna send this over to our workspace. There we go. We'll go ahead and connect. Okay. So now we're connected. Our material thickness is 0.6 millimeters. I'm gonna send this to device via the Wi-Fi, but I'm not gonna print it yet. What I'm gonna do is go out there, cancel it, and then we're gonna do the initial setup and then print this or cut this out. So we'll see you out in the shop. All right, so we're back out here in the shop. So what we wanna do is go ahead and we're gonna cancel or say no to our notification on if we want to start the job name now, job now. And the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect. And it gives us some safety instructions. This is a class four laser, chosen requires supervision. Put the machine into a laser filtering enclosure or put on the safety goggles, which I have the goggles and have the enclosure. Um, never start the laser beam. Operate the laser in a ventilated environment. Uh, always unplug the machine before performing maintenance. Okay. So we want to go ahead and fix our material. So I'm just using scrap. So I have one piece for doing the cut, but I need another piece. So I'm going to attach the scrap piece first and I'm just going to use the little plugs on there and this one I believe it's running through the setup it hasn't told me what it's doing yet so I'm just assuming so we know how that usually goes uh, close enough so we'll see all right I'm going to go ahead and close this side and go ahead and close or hit next Set material th thickness 0.6. Save. Work table height before running. See here, before running the autofocus procedure, the machine needs to know the height of the work table. Next. Carefully lower the laser module to the surface of the material and tap next with the known material thickness and tap next with the known, known material thickness the machine will calculate automatically the exact height of the work table so I'm going to use the paper trick there we go Make sure you have put on a pair of safety goggles before you set up the laser module and wear them throughout the laser engraving and cutting process. Yay, green. Next. Set work origin. So we're going to do... Yeah, I'm just going to set it right there. Bring it down a little bit. Set work origin, runner boundary. Okay, we're gonna move next. Autofocus start. Okay, so when I had the door open, 
it didn't do anything. I could smell it burning, but as soon as I closed the door, the laser started working and failed, I know. Okay. That time, a lot better. That is very loud. So I'm going to use a side door. There, and this time it says complete. So, camera calibration. Next. Camera calibration, start. So hopefully this is big enough. Complete. Awesome, you have successfully completed the initial setup. Got it. All right, well, it thinks we're good. So I'm gonna open the side door here. Pull these plugs out. It never asked me which one was the good, the best one. So I'm just gonna man manually run through these again. So, um, rather be safe than sorry. So at this point, I've gone ahead and ran through the calibration uh, with the laser. Uh, one thing I learned is to make sure that the doors are closed um, as it will run through the process, but not turn the laser on, okay? Um, another thing too, make sure that you have a large enough piece of paper on there for it to do the calibration process to start off with the first time you connect the laser as it goes straight into the calibration and doesn't tell you what it's doing. So you want to keep those in mind and then we can go. So I've gone through the calibration. I think everything's working properly. So I'm going to go ahead and start a job here and we'll take a look at the results once it's done. All right, so our cut is done. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got. I am loving it already. So it cut out just fine. There we go, yay. Um, I mean, it was pretty thin cardboard, but it is cutting like it should. So again, this was only 0.6 millimeter thick cardboard, um, but I am not complaining. So next, I'm gonna, we're gonna go in and set up a grayscale image for that to burn. I have a feeling that that is gonna take quite a while. Um, so once we get that set up, I will not bother you with the setup out here. I'll just run that and follow up the, at the end of the video with the results from there and give my initial thoughts, so. All right, so we're back here in Luban. I'm already in the laser G-code generator and I already have an image I would like to try and bring that in. And I do need to resize that to, let's go. So my largest width is 193 by 158. So I'm gonna use the MS Paint trick again. So walk through that just real quick to get what the ratio would be to bring that down. So if I resize this and I go to pixels and I turn off the aspect ratio, I can set it to what I have in here. So I have the 320 by 226. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the two here and a zero there. So we hit okay. So now that's resized the blank canvas. So I can go to resize again and leave the maintain aspect ratio on this time. And then I can just change my horizontal to let's do 
180. So it's 180 by 1800 by that. So if we bring up to bring our placeholder back up, so it's 180 by 127.2. So I'll just move that off the screen. So we do 180 and then 127.2. There we go. So now I can go ahead and select grayscale. Um, we can play around the contrast and see what happens. It seems to be kind of slow. Let's play around the numbers, see what we get. So like that would all blend together to me. So I don't want that low. A little bit better. Eh, just we'll leave it at the default. Let's do 50, 50. So we're going to go ahead and go to process. And then we have our jog speed, work speed, and the well time. So our jog speed again is just the movement. Work speed is how fast the machine moves when it's engraving. And then the dual time is how long the laser keeps on when it's engraving a dot. So five millimeters per minute. That makes no second sense. That should be a time based. Um, I don't know why this is even in here since it's a grayscale. Where did it go? I didn't change anything. Okay, there we go. It's doing something in the back. Oh, generating the tool path. Okay. Generating G code. Okay, so just by me changing that, it changed that. So I'm going to run this as it is, and we'll see how that turns out. So I have a feeling it's going to take it a little while. So we send that over here. There we go. See, it doesn't look too bad. All right, so let's go ahead and connect. And we'll send engrave test. That sounds good to me. All right. And send to the device. And I'll go ahead and get that started off camera. And when that's done, we'll go ahead and show it and over my thoughts so far so good though all right so the laser etch finish that i set up yesterday uh it took 14 hours and 29 minutes to run uh this was in the dot mode which is slower i actually have a line mode running right now and it's definitely moving a lot faster but it's still gonna be you know a few a few hours before it's completed um the estimate on this though was two hours and 29 minutes and again it took 14 hours and 29 minutes um here's a up close shot so it turned out really good um i did a few more letters because my daughter decided she wanted some letters cut out for her so i just did the alphabet like three or four times and um i used the box some of the scrap uh cardboard that came with the snap maker uh, which is at 0.6 millimeters um, i even had it set up to do a double pass on there and there were still bits and pieces that it didn't cut through so i don't know if maybe the cardboard just wasn't flat enough or if there's something else going on um, and it actually on the upper half of the sheet it cut through just fine it was on the lower half that it had an issue so that's why i'm thinking the cardboard was just bent or something like that um setting up for doing 
you know, the engraving and whatnot. That was very simple. Um, so I am glad that I got this. Um, again, this has not been paid for or anything like this. Snapmaker did not send me this printer. Um, I spent my own money on this and everything. So we're, you know, if there's something I don't like, I'm gonna say it. Like the software uh, for the 3D printing, it's pretty decent for what it does. Um, the CNC needs a lot of work, so I'll be looking into seeing what else I can do for that. Um, the laser seems to be working, but I'm gonna look at other options too, cause like for the letter cutouts, I can't, like the letter A, you have that centerpiece. What if I wanted that to stay in there? There's no way to take another layer and stack it and have it overwrite and not cut that out um, to keep that in there. So um, it's definitely young software and kind of worried because they did put it to open source that they're not going to actively work on it and make it better. Um, so going to have to look at some other options and see what I can come up with. And um, as, I fi as I find those, I'll let you guys know and I'll show you and everything. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a fun making, putting this together and running through all the different parts of it, the 3D printing, the CNC, and the laser. Um, so have a great day. And if you want to see more content, uh, we'll be doing, like I said, I got a... Uh, drill bit challenge I'm going to be doing to kind of see you know I'm taking some cheap harbor freight ones and a few other pack uh, sets that I got from online so I can share those with you and see which ones work better than others because I'm not happy with what I have so I just want to test out some different ones and see what works well for woodworking and whatnot uh, I also have a arcade cabinet I would like to build in the future and some puzzles that I want to go through and see if maybe I can use the Snapmaker here to uh, do some of that. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, please go ahead and subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.